Welcome to Home Movie 2009, Fernando in Mesa, Arizona. This is some footage I shot right before Bernando's 108th birthday party. My grandfather had been experiencing some stress since his wife had recently been hospitalized. Nevertheless, he was in the kitchen doing what he loved to do, cooking for his family and friends. Hey, hey Grace. Uh, sure. Condominiums yeah. they're building down on the waterfront. You're welcome. Oh yeah. How are you yeah, feeling, Grace? A little tired? That's what no, I'm like okay. I'm okay. I guess you know they came in and they tore out. Stephen, you good? Oh yeah. But I'll be all right. Well, we'll be here to distract you. Yeah. We'll probably talk with you half the night. It's nice, but it's wait till Vincent gets here. Kind of like oh, yeah. uh -huh. uh, Mavis is coming, well, I guess, you know, today. They did that. It's kind of in New York. Eventually. Uh, neighborhoods that uh, I grew up in Williamsburg. Uh -huh. yeah, they went in there, looked at the uh, area, but it looked great because uh, you still have the flavor. Right. They didn't like Some just demolish the show where you don't recognize the show. Fernando's birthday parties were always very well covered by the media. Here, we're talking about someone from Oprah Winfrey's show coming down to attend the party and possibly cover it, and also the local television stations. Usually an ABC affiliate would come down as well. I'm sorry for the background noise, but Ray and Yvette were having a good time chatting about all the changes back in Brooklyn. Yeah. Tonight? Yeah. People, no, 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 this no. place, they Oh, another another they, television they station is coming? Now. Channel 10 again? Channel no. 10 is I mean, you know, what we're like the utility like downtown Scott, so I'm they, back in Europe. They, they, oh, cool. You know, they put in all this new stuff that has like this. I have a friend that works for Oprah. Downtown flight, you know, oh, a friend, friend Oprah. a friend that works for Oprah. A friend that works for Oprah is coming tomorrow night to film. Yeah, and then she. That's great. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're happy because we're about to that. eat some of uh, yeah. Grandpa's like cooking. Oh, this is the yeah. This is. <laughs> I'm looking at the because I started yeah. making the uh, salad. I'll give it. Hello, Ray. Say hello. Hello. We're having uh, looks like some health salad with uh, avocado. Let's zoom in there. Mm. I'm going to try and... Okay. The is coming first. Hey, film me just so people know I was here. And here is Erica, a.k.a. Akayani. Akayani, saying hello. to Mesa. Yay! <laughs> On the school road. Um, Ooh, well, we've the got fruit the, salad. This is not just any this, fruit this salad. This is not just any fruit salad, people. This is the famous this fruit This is salad. the yeah. fruit salad. <laughs> The fruit salad, the coveted fruit salad. And I'm the first grandchild here, <laughs> so I get to eat as much as I want before my cousins get here. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, it's good. You know, we were trying to figure out what, what, what I put in the fruit salad. So. Oh no, it was the grenadine yeah. that we finally, you finally told us after like, you know, 20 years, right? Because every time we'd have it, we'd ask you, what's in the fruit? They'd be like, oh, nothing, oh, nothing. nothing. Well, it had nothing to do with the fruit. Really. Well, that's not in the analysis. <laughs> I, I meant to buy some the fruit this morning. Uh -huh. So it's okay. And you know, when I was born, like, and I used to be more time. I was like, Shirley Temple, Shirley Temple. Grenadine, <laughs> grenadine exactly. In case you missed that, Every chef has a secret, and my grandfather was no different. For his famous fruit salad, there was something extra in it that we could never put our finger on, and we tried to figure this out for years. Finally, when he got into his hundreds, he let the secret out of the bag. It was a little grenadine. said that he had a, uh, a bankroll. Yeah, but you said that... Uh, remember I asked you about my neighbor, yeah. Freddie Boyce, yeah. who also had a bankroll. Yeah. Up until... Yeah. Because he, he, I think, was 88. He was a seaman. Remember? I, yeah, yeah, he was a little bit, yeah. 
and uh, just a couple years ago he passed away. But he always walked around and uh, and no, in the in the uh, you know like the jumpsuit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, and he was always hanging out on the stoop. And when I first moved into that neighborhood uh -huh. in Brooklyn. I didn't know anybody, and he would always be sitting on the stoop. Uh -huh. So I would sit down there next to him, and you know we'd get into talking about yeah. the Bible, and yeah, uh -huh. he'd get into talking about telling stories about how he used to go into you know Little Italy and yeah. hang out with the guys over yeah. there, yeah, and whatnot. And uh, so that one, and then so he was always sitting there. People would come by and say hello, and and, th and yeah. this kind of thing, and uh -huh. then. Uh, one time his uh his daughter was saying you know that he had been in the hospital mm -hmm. and she said well you know and he wants to get out and, and everything and and he, she said well you know i just wish he'd stay in there one more day and get some rest and i could use some rest too because she mm -hmm. was taking care of him yeah and so uh i said well you know why does he want to get out so bad and she said, "Oh well, you know, he's still loan sharking, so you know he's got to get he's got to get back to work." Yeah, I, you know? Know, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't loan sharking, but I, I was I was making you know three, five, four dollars a day, and I'm in the hospital. I ain't making nothing. Yeah, people are calling and come in, and they don't they can't get the stuff. Right. And so I said, uh, I, "I gotta get out of here." Her mother, don't leave. This and that. And that. And he bet, oh, you can't be. I said, what they're doing, I can do it for myself. I don't, they're sorry me to death, and I'm not going to stay here. Yeah. You and got an acupuncturist out here? Is oh, that yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he's you know, in Scottsdale. Oh, okay. Good one, too. Yeah, he's very good. Anyway. Frank Costello and Bernando. Oh, sure, I know. I know not all the gangsters. Frank, Frank, Frank Costello. Costello. Sorry. He lived at 315 Central Park West. That's where he got killed. Actually, Frank Costello wasn't killed that day at 315 Central Park West. My grandfather was in the cab with him when he got out of the car to go into the vestibule of his apartment building. Grandfather heard a few shots from inside. I remember asking my grandfather, what did you do then? He said, I got the hell out of there. Remember, these were the days before cell phones. It's probably safer to say that this incident, the attempt on Frank Costello's life, put an end to the relationship that Bernando had with Frank. Well, I know Frank, uh, he, he, when he come to McGinnis's, see Al and uh, Stanley went to Fordham together. And uh, when uh, Al moved from uh, McGinnis, he was originally was McGinnis of Sheepshead Bay. The father was a liquor head, he couldn't handle the business, and he sent his son to Fordham because he didn't come out to it. He was just as bad. He moved from... Uh, he moved from from Sheepshead Bay, moved to Broadway, 47th and Broadway, opened up. Rose Beach King. Fernando met East Coast mob boss Frank Costello through a friend, a friend named Al Schoenbaum. Al Schoenbaum was also a friend of Stanley McGinnis, the son of Old Man McGinnis, of McGinnis's restaurant of Sheepshead Bay. My grandfather was a chef at McGinnis's in Sheepshead Bay, and he would personally make crab cakes for Frank Costello, who didn't want anyone else but Bernando to touch his food. Bernando declined the offer to work as a chef in a restaurant the mob wanted to open in Reno. Oh. Uh, McGinnis and Chief said, they. well, uh, him and Al are friends. And this is Al Schaumbaum? Yeah, this is Al Schaumbaum. Uh, your mother would know about him because I used to talk about him all the time because he used to call me going to McGinnis's.
Oh, okay. And uh, that's how I met uh, Frank. And, and like the whole group, because we had a room called the search room, and all the gangsters would come there and make their decisions who's going to do this, who's going to do that, who was banking numbers here. Who was banking. They wanted me to work for them in Reno, which is before Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. yeah. I opened mean, my hotel over there. They said, You make more? I said, I said, uh, Why would you want me to go there? There's plenty of uh, chefs around. You know, but you you have this and that. And that. So what, what year was this, like 1935 or 1940 or? No, this was in the 40s. In the 40s. So uh, anyway, <laughs> Al said to me, why don't you leave the ship and come on and work for us? You make by far more money than you make it on the ship. Uh, I said, but you see, I know about the mob. I told him. I said, once I get hooked up with them, I can't get away from them. You got a bad retirement plan. Uh, and that's, that's what I said. I said that I'm working with the unions. This is starting to up. I get a good salary. That's and like, benefits. Huh? And you get benefits. You get yeah. a pension after yeah, you know when you stop working. He said, well, you would make enough money. You should don't need no benefits. He said, if you go out to the, to the arena and open that hotel, and then they change the mind and you know, but it's from Las Vegas, the Joe Lewis Hotel. You know, they had a hotel there the Joe Lewis Hotel. Um, they wanted me to open that. So I said, um, i tell you what. No, he said, why don't you, you I'll give you a better idea, because Frank mentioned it. Why don't you open Why don't you, well, I couldn't find that other part of the clip, so we may never know what that other suggestion was that Frank Costello had for my grandfather in terms of a business venture. I can tell you, however, that my grandfather was very level-headed, very down-to-earth, and very wise. He stuck with his seaman's job until he retired from that and collected a pension from it well into his hundreds. I hope you enjoyed this.